Hey, Disciples of Christ. Today, I'm going to call it Fellowship Friday. You know, back in the uh, ancient days, they would fellowship, the apostles would fellowship. And so, although I'm not here with you, I consider this a sense of fellowship because they would fellowship, not just gathering to eat, a, you know, a bunch of people who are saved, but they would literally fellowship over the word and ask questions and think and meditate and break bread, not just physical bread, but spiritual bread together. So that's what we're going to do. Even though I'm not in front of you physically, I am still with you. And so I'm going to drop or give to you what the Lord has given to me today. And I just heard or sensed in my spirit, the topic of building an altar. So we're going to look at first Noah, the first mention of an altar in the Bible is that of Noah. And it was for worship. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings on the altar and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Check that out. He built an altar. He offered, he had offerings and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma aroma. And that's a great app. I mean, I found this recently. It's called hashtag Bible. If you want to check it out, I know they have it in the Apple store. Not sure about Android, a beautiful app. So let's start. Abraham, a faithful servant of God, built altars on several occasions throughout his journey of faith. In the book of Genesis, it mentions Abraham building altars as a way to worship and offer sacrifices to God. While the exact number of altars is not explicitly stated, we know that Abraham built altars at significant moments in his life. One notable event is when Abraham built an altar in Shechem after God appeared to him and promised to give the land to his offspring. See Genesis 12 and 7. We're going to read that. Another instance is when he built an altar in Bethel after separating from his nephew Lot. That's Genesis 13, 18. These altars served as physical places where Abraham could express his devotion, surrender, and seek God's guidance. Now look at that. I want you to use Abraham, fast forward to today, and how he used an altar and how we could engage with the spiritual and physical altars that we build. It's devotion, It's surrender and it's seeking God's guidance. Each altar represented a turning point in Abraham's spiritual journey, a symbol of his willingness to submit to God's will. The altar was the center and foundation of Israel's religion. Everything actually revolved around the altar. There was no access to God and no religion was acceptable to him other than by way of the altar. Now I wanted to direct you to, uh, they have great reading plans, um, on you version. You can do like a seven day plan. This, a lot of this information is coming from, it's called, if you want to find it, it's in you version, bible.com, the seven furnishing items of the tabernacle by Raymond D. Lombard. Um, the first connection, let's make connections. We're only going to talk about the two. Okay. We're going to talk about the altar, the brazen altar and the altar of incense. So the first piece of furniture in the tabernacle was the altar or burnt of burnt offering or brazen altar. The burnt offering altar was the only one, the very only one, where offerings to God were permitted. There was only one tabernacle or tent of meeting and only one place of sacrifice. The priest found it when he entered into in, entered the outer court. So let's learn about that bronze altar in Exodus 27, one through eight. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square and the height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horn shall be of the same and thou shalt overlay it with brass and thou shalt make, notice this, I got to research this, but notice he uses that pronoun and thou shalt make his pans to receive his ashes and his shovels and his basins and his flesh hooks and his fire pans. 
all the vessels thereof thou shalt make of brass. That's why it's called the brazen altar. And thou shalt make for it a grate of network of brass. And upon the net shalt thou make four brazen rings in the four corners thereof. And thou shalt put it under the compass of the altar beneath, that the net may be even to the midst of the altar. And thou shalt make staves for the altar, staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with brass. And the stave shall be put into the rings, and the stave shall be upon the two sides of the altar to bear it. Hollow with boards shalt thou make it, as it was shewed thee in the mount, so shall they make it. Exodus 38, 1. And he made the altar of burnt offering of shittim wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was four square, and three cubits the height thereof. So now let's talk about the altar of incense. This is found in Exodus 30, if you want to read it on your own quiet time. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon of shittim wood, shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shalt thou make it under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof. Upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it. And they shall be four places for the staves to bear it withal. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. I want you to really zone in on that. Where I, that's where he would meet with the high priest. But I want you to think about today and our altars that we can build spiritually and physically today. Verse seven, and Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. Check that out. Every morning when he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it. A perpetual incense before the Lord, here it is, throughout your generation. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering. Neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. Now remember, this is the altar of incense. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your, check it out, generations. It is most holy unto the Lord. Now here's what we just process a little bit. The father said in his word throughout generations, we knew Aaron wouldn't live forever. So this is when we have to read the Old Testament and, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the voice that's hidden in the, 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 the text, how does that apply to us if he says throughout your generations? right? We know that our great high priest now is Jesus Christ. So there's a part of this where we don't need the priest of Aaron or the priesthood or the priest that Aaron was. We, it went down and through generations through priesthood, which we still have, but we now have a great high priest. So this part is not, isn't necessarily needed, but it says throughout your generations. So what part is still needed? It says it is most holy unto the Lord. The veil separated the altar of incense and the ark. So just visually try to imagine that. And you can even Google and try to get some photos of the tabernacle and what this looked like. I was actually able to go into a physical representation of this years ago. And it just really just did a lot for my spirit. All right, let's continue. 
The golden altar of incense as the fifth piece of furniture of the tabernacle stood right in front of the veil of the holy place, but slightly deeper in than the table of showbread and the golden lampstand. So you have the table of showbread on the right and you have the golden lampstand on the left. The golden altar of incense is the third item in the holy place. It stood right in front of the ark of God where the throne of God was. The veil separated the altar of incense and the ark. The altar of incense was made of acacia wood and overlaid with gold. The altar of incense had four horns and a golden molding around the top of the altar to prevent the coals from falling off. Incense had to be burned every morning, here it is, and every evening on this altar. Remember, think of Joshua 1 and 8. He says, they that meditate on the Lord day and night. Let's continue. The hearth had to be full of burning coals. The coal came from the brazen altar where offerings were made. And it was these coals that ignited the incense on the golden altar of incense. We read about it in Leviticus 16, 13, and he shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony. Come on. So this incense would literally cover the mercy seat. Once a year during the day of atonement, the high priest did atonement on the horns of the golden altar of incense with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. This altar occupied a central place in the holy place. It stood between the table of showbread and the golden lampstand right in front of the veil. The altar of incense was also the tallest item in the holy place and also speaks of the greatest possible act of worship, prayer, praise, and intercession. Prayer, or in other words, what I call communion with the Father, is the most important ministry. The value of the altar was in the incense, and the incense speaks of prayer. King David says in Psalm 141-2, let my prayer be set before you. Look at those words. Think of the altar of incense as incense. The apostle John tells us in his vision of heaven. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense. Here it is, which are the prayers of the saints. Revelation 5 and 8. And we, when he had taken, we just really read that. So we don't have to go back through that. But let's look at 8 three through four. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense. Now this is all the way down to the revelation of John. Okay, let's continue that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Let me read that again. The incense was offered with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar. So we see the type and shadow from the Old Testament to the new. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Now think about what we just read, how when he would put the incense, that the the incense would cover the mercy seat. But now here, John is talking about the incense, which mingles itself with the prayers of saints is ascending now up above before God right now. So Christ always lives to intercede for us by the father. Now he's taking place of the great high priest. He's taking place of what was happening when Aaron started being the first high priest, the, the high priest to make atonement. So Christ, let me read it again, always lives to intercede for us by the father. And so we, the church through him can bring our thanksgiving offerings, our offerings of praise, our worship, and our prayers as a sweet smelling aroma. Hebrews 13, 15, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice. Look at these words of praise to God 
continually, just like the altar of incense burning continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Psalm 141 and two, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Come on. So now we're going to look at Abraham. You know, it talked in several, this is how it all gets started, got started for me. It's just the Lord just kept highlighting and Abraham built an altar. And this is how this has come together. This fellowship Friday of you and I Genesis 12 and seven. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thy seed, will I give this land? And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Verse eight. And he removed from thence and in unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he builded, here it is, an altar unto the Lord. And here we go. And called upon the name of the Lord. Now, remember, our goal is to look at the patriarchs, those of old, and take that pattern into our time. Genesis 13, one. Now this is after Abraham, there was a famine in the land and he goes through to Egypt and, you know, does the whole lie with Sarah saying that he's his sister, this part, uh, part truth, part lie. And so let's pick up at 13, one. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into the South. Genesis 13, two, and Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the South, even to Bethel. Now he's coming back unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and I unto the place. He's coming back to the altar unto the place of the altar, which he had made there the first And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And so that's what we're thinking about today. 13, 18, skip on down. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron and built there an altar on the Lord, onto the Lord. So we see this pattern, you know, we hear that song now, I always think of just Maybe when they call for salvation of the church, I'm a little emotional as I'm reading this with you, but it just says, Oh, come to the altar. The father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ. All right, so let's continue so I don't get lost in that. So now why are spiritual and physical altars, what I call meeting with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, important? Why are they important? We see this. As we reflect on Abraham's example, may we also strive to build altars in our hearts, places of surrender and worship, where we offer ourselves to God. In our lives, let us build altars of prayer, gratitude, and obedience, seeking to follow God's lead in every step we take. That's from that app, hashtag Bible. So what are our takeaways? First, we must understand the importance of making room in our hearts to authentically commune with the Father. That our priority is that we seek to know him and cultivate an eternal relationship with him as our father and friend. We seek relationship over religion. As an act of reverence, we recognize the importance of the brazen altar. It reminds us of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ on our behalf, the blood that he willingly shed for us to deliver us from the penalty and power of sin and to reconcile us back to the father. Therefore we offer our sacrifice of praise and worship. 
We physically make a time and a place where we meet with the Father, a place where we worship him, praise him, commune with him, make intercession, confess our sins, seek guidance, counsel, and comfort from his Holy Spirit. Lastly, we recognize the importance of building an altar. So we don't do it like Abraham did. We could, it's just a special place, a special designated place. I'm thinking of that uh, movie by Priscilla Schreier, The Prayer Room. I hope that's the right title, but it's just a designated place. An altar or a place of meeting with the Father. Yet at the same time, we know that we are to pray without ceasing, recognizing that he is Emmanuel that he is always with us. We know that we can talk with him at any place, at any time. Just as Zacharias the priest was charged with continually burning the incense, we offer continual incense before the Father, expressing our gratitude, thankfulness, and love for all he has done for us. So reflect on this. Build an altar today unto the Father, spiritually and physically. As Abraham as our example, even Noah as our example, and many are examples, we see the relationship that he had with the Father. May we seek to build a relationship with the Father, not just serve the Father, right? The Holy Spirit's reminding me of of Martha and Mary. See, Martha was engaged in service and Mary was engaged in, in, in getting to know him, sitting at his feet. Christ said, you know, Martha, Martha, you're much worried. You're, you're worried about many things, paraphrasing. And Martha, he says, the look at your sister, Mary, she's chosen that good part. So may we seek relationship over religion. As you are led, build an altar spiritually and physically for the Father in your hearts first, then an actual physical location. This is a location in your home where you physically meet with the Father and like Abraham, call on his name. A place where you worship him in spirit and in truth. A place to calm your fears, a place to receive his peace, a place to fellowship and commune with the Holy Spirit that has been placed inside of you. We know that the Father is always with us, but your altar will just be a designated place where you meet with the bridegroom. Here it is as the bride, a place to get to know him. For he said in his word, this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So what next? What should you do next? Re-listen to this video. Visit version and carefully read through the seven furnishing items of the tabernacle. Now, we only focused on two, the brazen altar and the altar of incense. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you as you build an altar of meeting place with him spiritually and physically in your life. And let me tell you how important it is. There's a verse in the Bible where he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So it's possible, according to his word, that we serve the Lord and never truly know him. But when we take the time and we make room, like Jonathan McReynolds said in his song, when we make room in our hearts and make time and carve out time for him, we make a a designated place where we say, this is the place where we meet with the Lord. It's a place where you, you'll have your Bible or you'll have worship music. You might choose to, you know, light a candle, but all of that doesn't matter if we don't just settle ourselves in God. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, do you know how to talk? You know, it's just a matter of opening his word, receiving the ministry of the word, talking to him. He says that Abraham was a friend of God. So meditate on this final verse. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Be blessed in Christ. Amen.